Hi, this is Richard Azerga from Microsoft, and this is the fifth and final pattern for connecting to SharePoint from an app for Office. So in some of the previous scenarios, we looked at things like an explicit login, we looked at taking an app for Office and embedding it inside an app for SharePoint, we looked at leveraging app-only permissions to connect into SharePoint, and we looked at some advanced scenarios like requesting permissions on the fly as our app needs access to various sites. So in this scenario, I'm going to call this the Office 365 API scenario. It's going to be similar to permissions on the fly, but it's going to have some unique um, advantages over that scenario. So in the permissions on the fly, I required the user to specify the site that they wanted to connect to. They had to enter in a URL. Using the Office 365 APIs, because those are really a tenant level app, I'm gonna be able to use something like the discovery service to go and give the user a pick list of sites. So they're never gonna to have to actually enter in a site URL, they can just select one from our list. From there, I'm gonna be able to go and connect to those sites and, and do all the same sort of operations. Now, one of the big differences here is that typically when working with the Office 365 APIs, there's a number of SDKs that make it really easy to work with. Um, however, one of the challenges of the Office 365 APIs and the entire um, Azure AD login process is it doesn't work great with the app isolation window that we use to display apps for Office. Um, when I click the sign in button, it's gonna go initiate a new window for that sign in process. And that window has really no way of communicating back into our app. And so what we're gonna do is a similar thing that we used in permissions on the fly, which is we're gonna launch the sign in process. We're gonna actually launch that OAuth process for permissions on the fly, it was the OAuth authorized page. Here, we're gonna go out to the um, login.windows.net slash common, which is what we use for a multi-tenant app, and specify the OAuth to authorize endpoint. And, and inside of that, we're gonna pass things like a client ID, uh, we're gonna pass the resource that we're wanting to connect to, a redirect URI, and tell it that we want an authorization code back. Now that redirect URI, we can pass a reference ID so that this window that's gonna pop up um, we have a way of correlating that back to the app. So what you'll see here is we're actually passing a temporary code, a, a GUID, um, into the redirect URI that we can use to, to map back to things. Because ultimately what we're gonna do is, is this process is gonna return an authorization code. In fact, this is the controller that gets the response. It's gonna get an authorization code that we can get an access token with. And then once we get that access token, we're actually gonna store the refresh token part of that um, and correspond that to that user ID, that GUID, so that anytime I come in, I can look and see, hey, do I have a, a cookie for that user? And if I do, go get all the sites um, for them using that refresh token. So um, this is a much more elegant solution because um, I never have to enter in um, anything into something like a, a text box for the user ID. Um, but one of the challenges is, is that the Office 365 API SDKs um, don't really allow us to, to customize that redirect URL. And so um, in this case, we're performing most of the operations with the Office 365 APIs manually. It's not that big of a deal. It's just doing normal REST type of things. Um, but just know that that might be one of the challenges and I would just highly encourage you to download this sample um, that's fully functioning to see how to perform that uh, because we're gonna go and ultimately get that authorization code and um, this token helper, this isn't the normal token helper, this is my own. Um, what it's gonna basically do, it's gonna perform the post to go and get an access token and it's gonna set all the the correct header information, like set it as form URL encoded. Um, it's gonna have all the different parameters for um, getting both a access token from an authorization code and getting an access token using a refresh token. 
Because remember, a refresh token is really what we're going to actually persist behind the scenes in our database. And so for me to get an access token portion of that, um, we want to be able to go and get that. Now, there's a lot of moving pieces to do all the Office 365 APIs manually. There's some great blogs out there. Chax has a great blog that shows you. He actually does it all in Fiddler. Um, but uh, again, you can download the solution. This is a simple little MVC app that shows you how this performs. So let's take a look at this. Um, in this case, I've cleared my cookies to show you what the first time um, experience will be. Um, what you'll see here is that I'm looking to see, does the user exist? And this is just saying, hey, do we have a cookie for the user? If not, launch that, um, the login process, the OAuth process with Azure Active Directory. So let's go ahead and see this. I'll go ahead and press play. Um, as soon as our app loads, what we should get is a pop-up. So it's going to immediately say, hey, I don't recognize the user here. I don't have a cookie for the user. I need to actually go and initiate that login process. So um, here in a second, it'll finish loading. So there's the app loading. You can see that it launched this um, authorization dialog. And it's actually finished with the authorization process here. It says you can now close it. And once I close it, if I say refresh now, behind the scenes, this app knows about a certain GUID that we passed into our dialog that got a refresh token. So I should have an access or a refresh token available for me now. So if I click refresh here, what we should see is this page will reload but this time, you can see it can actually go get all of the sites that we have access to. So now I can select any of these sites, and because I have our refresh token, I can go get you know, resource-specific access tokens very easily. So I'll maybe click on this dev site. It'll take just a second here, and it'll go load all of the list for that site. So you can see it's in the process of going out and performing a query. So here's all the list within that site. And I could go say, um, let's maybe get the music list. So I'll go ahead and click music. Um, that'll go query the data and you can see it inserted it into our Excel workbook. At this point, I could go get a different list if I wanted to and that'll again use the same site in context um, and allow me to select a different list. Maybe I'll get the jobs list this time and again that'll go out and pull that data. I could just as easily go back and select a different site. And again, this site listing here, this is actually a search result. It's like a site picker that's just saying, hey, we have a refresh token for you. Um, I can use that now with the Office 365 APIs to do a search for all the sites you have access to. And that's what this is displaying. It's all the sites that I have access to. Um, and so I can select on that and then select the list. So I think that, um, that this solution is definitely the most elegant of all of the five scenarios that we've walked through. Um, in fact, here, this was, I cleared my token, so the first time in it did a pop-up, but if I were to close this app now and relaunch it, um, what you'll see is I never get that pop-up again as long as my token is there behind the scenes. And the, all the token is is just a GUID for us to look up a refresh token. We're actually not storing the refresh token as a cookie, the refresh token is in the database. So um, here we shouldn't get that pop-up, it should immediately be able to go out and query for all of the sites that um, I have access to, which is what you see. So uh, anyway, this is the Office 365 API option for connecting to a SharePoint app uh, or connecting to SharePoint from an app for Office. And so hopefully these five scenarios give an idea of the different ways we can go about connecting to SharePoint from these apps, and you can pick the scenario that makes the most sense for um, your app.